It's 67 words long, it's 100 years old, and it changed the course of history for the Middle East and the Jewish people. The Balfour Declaration, the expression of the British government's support for a Jewish home in Palestine, was sent by British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to the second Lord Rothschild. I'm here in Buckinghamshire at Waddesdon Manor to speak with the fourth Lord Rothschild about the Balfour Declaration, what it means for Britain, for the Jewish people and the Rothschild family. The Foreign Office, November the 2nd, 1917. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you, on behalf of His Majesty's Government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the Cabinet. So it's possibly the most famous letter in modern Jewish history. And it begins with three words, Dear Lord Rothschild. Why was it that this letter was sent by the Foreign Secretary to your great uncle Walter? It's an interesting question because he was really interested in ornithology, <laughs> although he became interested in Zionism. I think the reason was this, that it was primarily a movement from Eastern Europe, but they didn't clarify who was in charge of that movement. And in addition, it was after all in Great Britain. So they felt that the Rothschild family um, should be the one to whom it was addressed. And Walter was Lord Rothschild and he was uh, a Zionist. And um, those rarely are the background reasons. So Walter received the Balfour Declaration, and, and I have a copy here. And I wonder if I could possibly ask you to read it for us. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to put on my spectacles to make sure I read it accurately. His Majesty's Government view with favour the establishment of Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavours to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. Yours, Arthur Balfour. And here it is, the Balfour Declaration. What do you feel when you, when you see it here? I genuinely feel it's one of the most extraordinary moments in the history of the Jewish people. Uh, if you think it took 3,000 years uh, to get to this. And of course, the Rothschild family then as now filled two roles because it wasn't just a leader of diaspora Jewry. It also played a very significant role in the early years of the establishment of the pioneer communities in Israel. As well. I just want to revisit for a moment your cousin Dorothy, who yes. you mentioned, uh, who at an extraordinarily young age, still in her teens, played such a yeah. critical role as a go-between and a, and a facilitator for Chaim Weizmann. Can you say a little bit about well, her? Well, she married my cousin Jimmy uh, when she was 17. So this is, um, this is your cousin Dorothy, Dolly. Yep, Mrs. James de Rothschild. And from her teenage years onwards, she was a major supporter of Israel, wasn't major she? Major supporter. I mean, she worshipped her husband, who'd been deeply committed, um, son of Baron Edmore. It was due to him, I think, that she became interested. But once she became interested, she became passionately interested. After his death, she became even more committed. She just wanted to carry out his wishes and what he cared deeply about. And you can read <clears throat> letters from her to Weizmann and from Weizmann to her when she was only 17. And what she did which was crucially important, was to connect up Weizmann with the British establishment. I well, think she also 
trained him in how to deal. She helped and, educate him how, how to conduct himself. And it's extraordinary himself. at that age, but she did <laughs> tell Weizmann, you know, how to um, kind of integrate, how to insert himself into British establishment life, which he learned very quickly. So I'm here in the Waddesdon Manor archives where there is a treasure trove of remarkable documents from the time of the Balfour Declaration. We have the correspondence here between the teenage Dorothy and her husband James. And it, it's really a love story. Here we have detailed letters describing her dealings with Zionist leaders, her advice and her suggestions regarding the, the conferences of the Zionist movement. And here we have a letter that the young Dorothy, still not 20, sent to Dr. Chaim Weizmann, where she's talking about the meetings that she's arranged for him. And as we've heard, she was helpful in, in training and preparing him to enter into the highest echelons of British society to advance the cause of the Zionist movement. And she was an important character. In